Hello, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On this bench today, we have a Hitachi HT350. Uh, this is a semi-automatic direct drive turntable. Uh, this turntable is manufactured by CEC, which is common for Hitachi. And uh, pretty classic looking Hitachi as far as features are concerned. Um, the only difference from the ones that we've done in the past and this one is this is all plastic. The whole plant is plastic. Um, obviously, the uh, the platter is metal, but uh, it's also a little bit of a cheaper quality platter. Not as nice as uh, some of the older units. But uh, the issue with this one, according to the owner, is that uh, it's not spinning whatsoever. So I thought let's uh, put it on the bench, uh, give it a quick test, and then uh, let's uh, get it open, dig into it, and see what's going on with it. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. All right, so this is a semi-automatic, like I said, so therefore you move the arm forward and it should start spinning. And we have nothing and the strobe light is not coming on. I don't hear any sound whatsoever. Nothing from the motor. So if I were to guess, I'm going to say that uh, usually when... Uh, you move the arm over, there's a little micro switch that'll uh, open up and uh, you usually hear a little click and uh, that's when the uh, platter starts spinning. Well, I have a feeling either the micro switch is um, dirty or something uh, is out of position and it's not activating it. So let's uh, get this uh, sucker turned over and uh, we'll have a look and see what's going on with it. Just gonna put the uh, dust cover back on. Now this one's got a nice uh, latex spray to it. Uh, looks like someone was rolling paint on their walls and got it all over their turntable. Plus it looks like there's a, a burn mark or something right in here. So we won't be putting down uh, any kind of protective cloth or something, but we really should remove that uh, platter. Okay, way too many screws, so I'll pause and we'll be right back. I've never really understood the need to put like 18,000 screws in the bottom of a turntable uh, base, but uh, this one is kind of like a uh, cardboard material, but it's very thin. I'm almost surprised that it uh, can support the weight of the turntable. All right, here we are. So, here is our micro switch over here, and I'm just going to lift this up and see if the, uh, oh, I can already see that this is uh, all gummed up. I'm just going to see what it does when we move the arm here. Looks like this right here is not moving, so I have a feeling that that is just gummed up grease. So whatever this mechanism here is here. We're probably going to need to clean that. There's looks like a little ball here, and that opens the switch here, like that. So we'll do that. We'll uh, ew, grease. Um, we'll get that cleaned up, and that should be it. I had a feeling it'd be a micro switch situation. It usually is micro switch. Also, while we're at it, why don't we check these two fuses? I do like to check fuses when I got a no power situation. Just put your multimeter on continuity mode. And we'll just check those. That one's good. That one's good. So our fuses are good. So it's likely just the uh, micro switch. Okay. So we're going to have to figure out how we want to get at this mechanism here. It's right under this post right here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. Like that. Hopefully you can see that good. All right. Okay. So it looks like this mechanism comes over here. And it might be held on by this E-clip 
here and it's big spring. So I think we're going to have to uh, lift this entire plate off. And it looks like it goes up into the back end of the turntable and underneath the auto return mechanism. So we want to make sure our auto return mechanism is in the home position, which it is. All right, so I'm going to remove this clip here. And uh, like I said, there's a, a spring under what looks to be high tension here. This is going to be really fun to put back. I can already tell. Yeah, this is under some severe tension. Uh, just gonna spin this a little bit here so I can get my screwdriver in there, hopefully. There we go. All right, you really got to hold on here because this will go shooting across the room. Okay, there's our E-clip. Just going to put that there for a second and release the spring. That hurt. Here's our washer. Our spring. And I'm thinking this should come up now. And it does. And here's the culprit right here. This is totally gummed up. And uh, crazy enough, I don't think you can actually remove it. This is like a, ew, this is like a, a rivet. It's riveted on. So we're going to have to clean this up with some uh, WD-40 and then uh, get some get some grease back under there. And we'll remove this grease too, because if this grease went bad, this can't be that far behind. If you don't like nasty grease, don't work on turntables. And I don't like nasty grease, but I do like working on turntables, so. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit this with a little bit of uh, WD-40. Just soak it in good and we'll work it back and forth. It's already freed up. WD-40 eats old grease for breakfast. Does a great job on it. There's a little bit here too. I'm just gonna wipe it off. Wipe off my hands. This should be all that's wrong with this one. We'll still give it a, a general service as well. So I'm just going to give it a shot of white lithium here. It doesn't need a lot. Just put a dab here. Like that. Get back and forth. There's a little bit here, like that. There. That's better. While we're at it, we're going to clean this mess down here. Yeah, let's soak it first with a little WD. There and get that white. See how WD-40 just annihilates grease? Don't lubricate with it. Just clean with it. This is not going to be easy to put back, I'm telling you right now. That spring is under so much pressure, tension. Okay. All right, so this goes back like this. This goes in, something like that.
something like that, I'm going to say. Let's just see the arm. Here, it's clicking now. That should start it up. And that should hopefully be all there is wrong with this one. So we're going to need to put that spring back now. And then we're going to have to put it under tension and then get this E-clip on. So this is going to be hard. Okay, so I'm going to get my pliers close because I'm going to try and get this started here. The clip started in the position that I need it in. And then while trying to hold this spring down with my thumb, sorry if you can't see that, but if I let go of this spring, it's going to be a real problem. I'm trying to do it so you can kind of see. Nice. That hurt. But it's not going anywhere now. Perfect. All right. So I think that should solve our uh, our uh, non-spin situation here. I should check it right away, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly uh, hit some service points under here. So let's zoom out again. And we'll, uh, we'll hit the pitch control and the speed selector switch, which are over here. And then uh, we'll service our motor. I believe that's our pitch there. Yes, it is. Let's work that back and forth a little bit. Okay, and this is our speed selector switch. We'll hit that as well. And just back and forth a little bit. And then we'll, uh, we'll service our motor here. Move that ground out of the way. Uh, I'm not sure what size these are. I'm going to guess something like uh, six mil. No, six mil is way too big. No, let's go. Uh, let's go five mil. Nope. Okay, let's try 7.30 seconds. Aha, there it is. some washers here so be careful not to lose those here's our motor can you guys see that yeah, you can kind of 
quite a few wires here. I'm just going to pull this off on the side. We're just going to give it a standard service. There's no oil in there whatsoever. There's a ball bearing though, and that's fun. Hang on, let's grab that sucker. There it is. Oh, there's a little bit of oil. A little bit, not a lot. It's all over my fingers. Ball bearing there for now. It's like the fifth time I've had to wipe my hands so far. So we're going to clean the spindle. We're going to clean the bushing. And we're going to give it some fresh oil. Just a Q-tip. A little bit of alcohol. And just clean inside your uh, your bushing bearing pit here. Like that. I know I'm a little bit off camera here, but you guys have probably seen me do this a million times now. Yeah, this one is uh, actually still pretty oily. I thought it was dry, but... That's uh, actually not too bad. All right, these are super lube oil. I like to put a couple drops before I put the ball bearing in. We'll drop our bearing in. And then a few more drops. Put a drop or two on your spindle. And just put it back in. Just like that. I'll lubricate it up. Put the motor back. Like that. You can see that the motor has a little bit of adjustment, eh? So if uh, if you find sometimes your auto return is tripping, um, sometimes the gear on the main spindle is a little bit too close to the teeth on the uh, auto return mechanism. So this is a slight bit of adjustment. You probably got like one or two millimeters you can go, but I'm just going to put it back in the center where it was, just like that. We'll put our nuts back on. Okay, that's everything underneath. Why don't we just uh, put the base on without screwing it back on and see if we have spinning now. Plug it in, and uh, hopefully I put that uh, gear back to where it's supposed to be. All right, who wants to bet that it's spinning? Ready, set, go. Ooh. Oh, there it goes. That was kind of weird.
Ooh, this thing's doing all sorts of weird stuff. Auto return. Let's just let it cycle once, right? Always let your turntable cycle. Uh, let's see here. Queuing up. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Well, this is not good, to say the least. It's a spinning, but it's a not the spinning nice. It's not the, uh, the motor's nice and loose. Seems like it has an issue here. I had a... Um, subscriber sent me an excellent suggestion this past week and he said uh, I enjoy your videos but why don't you ever take off the uh, the counterweight when you're working on your turntables and you know that, that's a great idea I always seem to forget to do that and when you do that the arm is is uh, it's not going to fling up right and it's, uh, it's a lot better so thanks to him for that awesome suggestion I'm going to clean this grease off here too And I honestly don't think this is a grease situation. This is some kind of motor issue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back over and I'm going to see if there's a service manual for this thing. And we're just going to check some voltages and see if we have correct voltages. And uh, what I'll do is I'll come back once I have a peek around and we'll go from there. Okay, just a little update. Um, what I've been doing is I've been just uh, playing with the uh, controls uh, for speed on the board here, the fine tuning controls. I've centered the pitch control in the middle. And um, what I've done is I've uh, got 33 and 45 lined up to where they're uh, equal. I also sprayed these a little bit of contact cleaner and just moved them full sweep. Now, 45 is stable. It's 33 that's wavering like this, and it's not a dirty control because 45 is okay. I've cleaned this uh, speed control a couple times now. Um, what, uh, what I'm concerned about is when you initially move the arm over, the motor spins for a little bit like what you would have seen there um, before in the video. It spins a little bit and then it stops. So it's not getting, uh, you know, it's not getting up and going, so to speak. So I'm going to think, I'm going to guess here, that we may have a weak capacitor, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm definitely not doing this on camera because it's uh, time consuming and extremely boring. I am going to measure these capacitors one by one, and I'm going to see if, there's, if we have a weak one here, or if we have, um, you know, uh, poor ESR or low capacitance. So I'm going to check these caps, and I will be back. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, yeah, the bench is a mess right now because we have been tearing out transistors. Um, these, actually there are six of them. This is the infamous Hitachi 2SC458. Now these transistors are known to go noisy after many years. And um, I went on a couple forums, um, asked, you know, checked specifically for this uh, situation where we've got a, a wavering speed and we've done everything to take care of cleaning pots and so forth. And uh, a lot of people were recommending having a peek at these uh, 2SC458s. Now, there were several brands of companies who made the TSC458, but it's the Hitachi ones that you need to be careful of. And they're pretty specific looking they look they're like a notchback design 
and these are known to go bad. They're in all sorts of equipment from back in the day. Um, receivers, tuners, uh, turntables. And uh, what I've done is there, there were six on the motor board and I pulled all six. And I replaced them with a, uh, a modern equivalent, which is a 2SC 1815. And uh, as you can see, we're spinning. The reason that it's off the... Uh, the uh, camera view right now is I'm adjusting speed on it and also um, in the forums they mentioned to change CO2 which is a 10 uh, sorry a 22 microfarad at 10 volts um, CO1 and CO2 is what they said to replace but I didn't replace CO, uh, CO2 yet I replaced CO1 and uh, looks like we're holding speed now um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust the speed underneath get it all lined up and then I'll show you where these uh, transistors are. All right, um, here's our board. I want you to unbolt it. Here's the cap I changed, which is right there. CO2, I'm gonna inspect some more of these caps. These are the new transistors I put in. These are the 1815s, 2SC 1815. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them that I replaced. I probably only need to replace the ones right in the speed control circuit, but um, because they're notorious and transistors are really cheap, I decided to replace them all. Um, I still haven't had a chance to go around and uh, examine all these capacitors. I'm doing that next. Um, this one, these are Panasonic caps and they are um, notorious for leaking electrolyte. I think this one has a little bit of corrosion on the bottom leg here. It's tough to say. Oh, my dog's barking. Uh, so I'm going to go through them and I'm going to check a few more and I'll be back. Hey, welcome back. Well, um, this was a little bit of a struggle, but uh, I believe we've taken care of the electronic issues on this motor board. Um, I found it interesting that uh, when I was looking through the forums that uh, they mentioned uh, the seal one back here and it was one of these... Uh, old Panasonic Matsushita branded capacitors. So I put it on my uh, little strobe um, and I checked the capacitance. I believe it was a 10, mic no, it was a 22 microfarad. It's a 2.2, this is it. This was 22 microfarad at, at uh, 10 volts. And uh, it came up at like 13 microfarad, so it was really low. So I said, you know what, I'm going to test all these little Matsushita caps on the board. And every one of these tests bad. They're all bad. Um, not are they, only are they bad, they're starting to get a little bit of corrosion on the legs, which is very, very common for these Matsushita caps. So if you have these on, on your turntable, on your motor board, and you're having issues, swap them out. And they're this blue color. Uh, these things are a nightmare. So every one of these caps measured about half capacitance of what they should have been. So changing these, I changed out those uh, 2SC458s. Speed is rock solid now. Um, it's spinning beautifully. I've adjusted the uh, speed plots here. Um, so pitch is right in the middle on the top of the turntable. So uh, that's awesome. So I'll be returning to these uh, parts to the customer. I'm going to button this up and we're going to do a sound check. Welcome back. Uh, we're all buttoned up again here and uh, things are looking good. The uh, arm has been balanced and uh, tracking force has been set. Anti-skate has been set. And I think we're ready to uh, give this thing a little bit of a sound test. Turn on my amp. No hum, which is a good sign. We'll set our cueing up. And uh, remember before I brought the arm over and uh, it moved about a quarter turn and then died. And that is due to uh, bad capacitors or noisy transistors. Tough to tell. I did a bit of a blanket uh, replacement there just because I found a couple bad ones, right? So here we go. And our motor switch is clicking nicely. I think our queuing needs an adjustment on height. No, it's okay. Just coming up. Here we go. Speed is right on. 
dead on accurate, 33 and a third. You can hear the trombone there, very stable. No wow and flutter. That's me actually touching the uh, the record with my finger. Sorry, um, this arm lift is very low, and it's got an Audio Technica AT10 on it, and they are very short cartridges, so it's really hard to get your finger underneath. So well, that's the queuing. Oops, you didn't see that. Yeah, this queuing is really slow to come up. Might have to adjust the height on that just a little bit. Super slow to come up. Now it's okay. Oh, it's super slow. All right. Just want to see how our uh, auto return works. Come on. Yep, figures. Another thing to go wrong in this one. I uh, will check the manual. I'm sure there's an adjustment for that. Unless it just needs a recycling. No, it is going. Yeah, it undoubtedly needs some kind of adjustment. There's also a screw somewhere there that you can adjust your anti return or your uh, your auto return. So I'll do that. I'm not going to bore you with that. But uh, yeah, there you go. Um, this one was a bit of a problem. So we replaced all these uh, two SC four five eights Hitachi branded ones. Okay, um, only the ones with the notch back. Any other brand should be fine. Okay. And we replaced all the crappy Matsushita capacitors. Um, these were all measuring less than half capacitance on my meter. So these were all garbage. So anyway, if you have a Hitachi HT350 and you, first of all, you're not getting the click of the start. Okay. You've got gummed up mechanism, which uh, turns on the micro switch. So that needs to be cleaned. We cleaned that with a little bit of WD-40 and we greased it. And then if you're still, if you get that fixed and then you're still moving the arm over and then it starts and stops like that, and then you have to give it a push to get going, check those uh, caps, replace them, you might as well, and pull out those T two uh, SC 458s and replace them with a 2SC or KSC 1815. And that will take care of your Hitachi, uh, which is a CEC manufactured turntable. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in again. That one was a little bit more technical. Hopefully uh, you didn't get too bored with that, but uh, it was interesting for me because uh, it involved a little bit of problem solving, a little bit of uh, multimeter work, which I enjoy. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.